what is all this mess over here? What's, <laughs> what is this stuff? Well, Haney, what I'm going to be talking about now is actually how do you deal with the contaminated airway? Okay, cool. Before we do that, remember, we have some more in-studio guests. We have some more remote feed guests. We have more procedures, obviously. And then we have a panel and we have a CME game show. And just so we're all on the same page, the CME evaluation will be available at the end of the conference. So as we get towards the end, I'm going to flash up some QR codes and some links that you can go to so that you can have the evaluation. Because let's face it, you probably want CME and CEUs for this, and we provide you that at this conference. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Sham and show us how to deal with the contaminated airway. Sounds good. So secretions, blood, vomit, they can very quickly turn a routine procedure into one fraught with complications that can result in aspiration pneumonia and hypoxemia that is really bad for the patient. Also. But I'm here to introduce you to a technique that is a game changer for this. It's called suction assisted laryngoscopy and airway decontamination or salad. And it was initially coined by Dr. Jim Ducanto. So the salad approach actually is a systematic approach to dealing with airway clearance and visualization, leading to safer and more rapid intubation. Now, before we begin, I want to remind you that the most important thing when it comes to a critically ill trauma patient is to not intubate them before you've resuscitated them. You absolutely want to make sure that you give them blood products if they need it, fluids if they need it, before you intubate them. And that goes for more than just a trauma patient. Basic airway maneuvers are incredibly important during this period. Don't forget your uh, oropharyngeal airways, your nasal pharyngeal airways. Don't forget about apneic oxygenation with nasal cannula at the flush rate oxygen. And definitely, definitely don't forget about suction. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So now there are a number of challenges that we're really hoping to overcome with this procedure and this technique that we're going to use today. The first challenge is visibility. Imagine driving through a windstorm and a blizzard with a dirty windshield through a windshield that you can barely see through. Poor visibility really increases the risks of a failed intubation attempt and trauma to the airway as well as hypoxia. Challenge number two is aspiration, a serious complication of intubation, and this can lead to pneumonia, ARDS, and even death of the patient. Tracheal suctioning methods may not act, act traditional suctioning methods may not actively uh, adequately protect against a, aspiration in this, in this procedure. And then challenge number three is time. In emergency airway management, time is critical. Every second we spend struggling with the airway delays oxygenation and ventilation, potentially worsening the patient's condition. So the salad technique addresses these, these challenges head on. Traditional approaches to intubation often start with scissoring open the mouth and to insert the laryng laryngoscope into the mouth. And while this would work in the very controlled environments of the operating room, we don't really have that luxury in the emergency department and the pre-hospital realms. So the key principle of salad technique is continuous suction. Now, traditionally, we've relied on this tool, the Yankauer suction catheter. This was, believe it or not, was developed in 1907, and somehow we're still stuck using it. And the problem with this device is that it was invented by an ENT physician for ENT surgery, ENT surgical procedures. Its small bore works really well for small bleeds from, say, tonsillectomy procedure. But when it comes to large bleeds, vomit, uh, thick secretions, or even um, solid particulate matter in the airway, this really doesn't cut it. So for in those really critical situations, I really recommend larger bore Yankauer devices, or let's say larger bore suction devices. This particular one I have with me here is a Ducanto catheter. It's got a very large inner diameter, um, and that actually comes in handy for more than one uses, and we'll touch on that soon here. So step one is really to open the mouth for the suction catheter, not for your laryngoscope. And you're going to aggressively suction the airway using this large bore rigid catheter. And if, if you can see, the catheter is actually contoured better to the airway um, than your standard uh, Yankauer suction. So we're gonna um, grip the catheter like this with kind of an overhand grip, not so much the tomahawk grip, but kind of a back, backward sword grip, and use that to suction the upper airway. Once we've done that, we can actually use the catheter to push inferiorly on the jaw. Now, Ian, can I get the uh, overhead camera here? 
So we're going to be able to push the inferior, the jaw inferiorly and make space within the mouth for your laryngoscope to be inserted. I'm going to turn this on before we move forward so that we can actually get that feed um, as well. And as I'm suctioning in here, I, I'm pushing down to give myself adequate space. An important part of this is to make sure that the cervical collar has been removed and somebody's maintaining inline stabilization from the, the bottom side of the bed, not from the head, so that they're not in my working area. But once I've got the suction in, I can then insert my laryngoscope, and we're gonna now use a technique that was coined by Dr. Kovach, George Kovach, another airway guru, and we're gonna do the EVLI technique. That's epiglottoscopy, voleculoscopy, which is seeing that space above the epiglottis, seating, seating your blade into that, laryngoscopy, there's the L part, and then followed by intubation, which is the I. We're gonna hold off on the I part for just a minute. So again, epiglottoscopy, voleculoscopy, and laryngoscopy. Using my suction, I can then suction the posterior oropharynx, get into the esophagus if I need to, as well as get into the trachea and suction all of this area here. In this uh, situation, it may be necessary to actually keep the suction in the mouth and in the, uh, in the hypopharynx. Um, and the problem with doing that on this right side of the laryng laryngoscope is that you now don't have the space to bring in your ET tube. There's really not a lot of space here. So we're going to use a technique called the suction park technique. And that's basically where you're going to pull out the suction and bring it to the left side of your laryngoscope. And what that allows you to do is it frees up all of the space on the left side, but it allows you to actually seat the, um, the suction catheter into the, um, uh, excuse me, into the esophagus. Now, Ian, can we see the uh, glide scope view here? So what you actually see is, I'm going to show this again, but initially I was suctioning on the right side, and now I'm going to take the suction out and bring it over to my left side and seat it within the into the um, esophagus here. And then that gives me some room on the right side to be able to bring my endotracheal tube in. Let's have the overhead now. The next technique I'm gonna mention is actually called the, the salad poke method, which is where you take a finger and you actually put it into the airway to kind of open up this airway, this space here. And what that does is it just gives you a little bit of extra room to bring your tube in from the side. Can we get the uh, glide scope view now? And then you can actually bring your tube in to then intubate the patient here. All right, so I'm gonna pause and go back a little bit. Let's get the overhead cameras one more time. So just to review, you've got your suction park method, bringing it onto the left side. And you may need to readjust your grip here. And then the salad poke method, which is where you put your finger into the mouth to dilate out this space. And this allows you to actually shift your blade over to the left by holding all those tissues. And then you can bring in your endotracheal tube for an intubation there. All right, so there are actually a couple different methods that we can use to intubate from this position here. The first I'm gonna mention is just kind of your standard intubation. We're using a glide scope, a hyperangulated glide scope, and so we can then intubate just like this. If we're using a direct blade, we're gonna use a corresponding uh, malleable stylet that we've bent at maybe a 70 degree, some people like a hockey stick angle uh, for an intubation with a standard geometry blade. The other option that I kind of alluded to earlier was actually to use your Ducanto catheter to place it into the airway. And what's unique about this Ducanto catheter is you can then place, and actually before I do this, I want, uh, Ian, can we get the glide scope view real quick? And so what you'll see is I've actually placed the tip of my Ducanto catheter into the airway. Let's get the overheads now. I'm de de disconnecting the Ducanto uh, suction catheter from the suction tubing and I can pass a bougie through this. The diameter is such that a standard bougie will fit through here. And now what you've done is using this rigid catheter, you've intubated the airway, you've now passed a bougie through that, and over this bougie, you can pass your endotracheal tube. 
Um, and it really helps to have an extra pair of hands to do this part of the procedure. And I always recommend actually watching the tube pass instead of pulling your glide scope out with just a bougie in place. So now once this is out, uh, once the tube is in, you can pull your uh, bougie out. Well, I'm going to do that one more time and just we're going to watch it on the glide scope video so we can switch over to that. So we've got our airway. We've seated in the Ducanto catheter into the trachea. I'm going to pass my deconnect, disconnect from the suction, pass my bougie through, pull the Ducanto catheter out, and then railroad my ET tube over, and there you've got your tube in place. All right, so lastly, these are the patients for which you really have to be comfortable. We'll get the front camera now. You really have to be comfortable with doing front of neck access. Surgical cricothyroidotomy may be the only way to secure an airway on a patient with a contaminated airway. And it's really important to be ready for it. The easy part is that you only need four things. A number 10 scalpel, a finger, a, a bougie, and a 6 ET tube. It's very simple. Scalpel, finger, bougie, tube. It's as simple as that. So let's briefly recap the techniques. Lead with suction, not the laryngoscope. Use the suction device to open up the mouth to make space for your laryngoscope to enter. EVLI, epiglottoscopy, moleculoscopy, laryngoscopy. Um, suction park allows you to move your suction over to the left side and park it there. Uh, salad poke makes a little extra space on the right side of the mouth. And then intubate with a bougie. Don't be afraid to pull the trigger early on performing a surgical cricothyroidotomy. It might just save your patient's life. By prioritizing airway clearance, visualization, and the use of these adjuncts, like the bougie, we, may, we can overcome the challenges associated with the contaminated airway.